Good morning everyone, Shalom from Jerusalem. I was actually going to be discussing this issue in my weekly Israeli Insiders podcast. However, in light of everything that has happened yesterday uh, and the nation's reaction and the emails that we're getting and the concerns, I'm going to go ahead and discuss a couple things with you just so you can be at peace. First of all, um, yesterday a law was passed that we have been discussing for about six months. If you don't know all the details of the ins and outs of it, you can go back to our January, February, and March Ma'oz Israel report and, um, and read up on it because it's not a simple issue. And it's not about a left or right. Uh, in fact, this law can be used by the left or the right for good or evil. Um, essentially what it is, and there's multiple laws in order, so it's not just a, um, it's not just a one step thing, it's just the first step. And it has to do with the checks and balances in our democracy. Um, if you're familiar with U.S. democracy, they have the legislative, they have the judiciary, and they have the executive. So you have the president that can do things, you have the Supreme Court that can make decisions, and you have the legislature, the Senate, and the House. So in Israel, uh, we have the Knesset, uh, which has a coalition out of 120 seats. You just need a majority, and you can pass a law. And then what happens is it goes to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court can rule on reasonableness and whether the law is reasonable. And the reason we call it that is because we don't have we have a Declaration of Independence, which states certain things uh, that are considered basic laws and standards, but they're not a constitution that is you know you absolutely have a really difficult time uh, changing. And so um, yesterday, the first step in uh, a series of moves was made to pass a law that essentially neutered the power of the Supreme Court and their ability to um, object on the base of reasonableness. And so this isn't to say that every decision that the Supreme Court has made um, in in canceling out laws is something that I would agree with, but it is a check check and balance. Um, and in every government, you're going to have things that the government does that you like and things that you don't like, and that is the nature of a democracy. Um, so what happened yesterday was they basically canceled out the reasonableness clause, which allows the Supreme Court to look at a law that is passed by. Um, by the Knesset and say, it's not reasonable and we're not allowing this law to pass. So we're almost in a catch 22 because the question is, can the Supreme Court cancel a law saying that the Supreme Court can't cancel a law? Nonetheless, what ended up happening was uh, people took to the streets. Now they've been taking to the streets for the past six months on Saturday nights and on different occasions, shutting down and um, highways, um, for the most part peaceful, a couple of incidents here and there, but I don't like to focus on them because I don't feel like those are the story. I feel like those are outlawing issues. Um, and even the police were discussing that up until yesterday, uh, where things got a little rougher because people were very emotional, um, the police had not been injured in all these protests. They. Um, the, there had been some altercations, there had been some arrests, but the point is Israel, Israelis are not interested in burning our country down because we don't have another one. And so we, we have had people writing us, are you guys going to civil war? I've heard that, you know, there's gonna be war. And, and so here's, let me, let me just explain a couple things. We don't have a country if we don't have this country. We don't have a place to go to. And so there's no interest here uh, in helping out Hamas and Hezbollah, which we fight on a regular basis, and terrorists on the street, by fighting each other. These are people on the street with Israeli flags saying that they want to live in a democratic uh, nation where they there are checks and balances and nobody is God and nobody's above the law. Um, and so it was, it was interesting to hear the people that passed the law it was passed 64 to zero, which means everybody who opposed it of the 120 seats simply didn't vote. They, they were so upset about it, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't take it a, a, to a vote. So um, then the, those who voted in favor got on the news and just described something. And I was thinking to myself, man, if I heard them describe this, I'd be like, oh, that sounds, that sounds, that sounds good, right? Like, this is, this is good. 
the thing is, is nobody, um, I mean, if we learned anything, a power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so we're not, I, you don't ever want to be in a position where one person can um, just decide anything or, or one group of people. And what we had yesterday, because everyone, the, the opposition was essentially saying, hey guys, can we, okay, you guys, ha you're in the majority, you can do things, can we have a apshara, like, um, uh, what's the word in English? Um, um, tone it down, you know, um, get some uh, compromise. And uh, basically what they're saying is that Netanyahu came into the meeting wanting to have this compromise conversation. And he was overrun by the people in his coalition. And this is where things get tricky because Netanyahu is in a very vulnerable spot. He has court cases against him. And as long as he's prime minister, he has certain privileges and ability to maneuver as prime minister that he wouldn't have if he was just a regular citizen uh, with these court cases against him. And their court cases essentially uh, charging him on integrity issues uh, and I won't get into all those because that would just make this a really long video but I, I do want you to know that I do not foresee any kind of war between a civil war between Israelis um, we live in a country that is under constant threat of extinction and we're aware of that and if any of you guys watching have ever been in actual war have ever fought in a war you know that it doesn't matter how mad you get at your fellow soldier, you have a bigger enemy out there. And so we always have that in the back of our minds and we love our country. We don't want to burn it to the ground. We just also don't want it to go run off the railroads. And so, and and you should know if, if you haven't uh, listened to my Israeli Insiders podcast or read any of my writings, I'm generally not a political person. I don't see politics as the answer to everything. And so that's why when I present certain issues, I'm not presenting them as a left or right issue. I don't care. I believe in raising healthy families. And I believe if you have a healthy society based off of healthy families, you can even have corrupt leaders or problematic leaders that make your life miserable and you can still have a good society. Whereas if you have godly leaders and a corrupt society with all broken families and just a mess of a society um that's that's a worst case scenario and so that's where i'm that's where i'm coming from in general i i uh, if you go back and read um the january february and march miles israel report we went in depth explaining that israeli politics is not as simple as politics in other countries we, it's not even a left and right like there is no clear cut wow i'm a left person i'm a right person because the the issues don't don't feel that they, they don't go down on the left and right there are things that i agree with on the left and there are things that i agree with on the right and so actually every time i vote it's some different political party i vote because i believe that we should but i i don't rely on politics to save me or my country um i do think that certain ways of doing things in politics can definitely make our lives more more miserable and so i do ask for your prayers during this time that israel would walk in the path that god has called her to walk and sometimes it takes some wrestling and sometimes it's messy and um the closest that we have come to even discussing military issues um is the refusal of some reservists in the Air Force particularly, which is Israel's like pearl. This is like the part of the military that goes out and fights and you know does strikes and keeps us out of having to go in with ground troops. And very, very valuable to us. Um, hundreds of them, in fact, a thousand signed uh, a document saying that they wouldn't serve under a under a government that would pass such laws and not have any checks and balances because they wouldn't trust the decisions that are being made. Um, 500 of those about were pilots, which is a huge number in Israel. Um, but 
this is not them saying we're going to take our planes and attack you them it's them saying we don't want to serve um because this is a volunteer basis they're reservists they're not required to come in um we don't want to serve and and we're concerned about the decisions that a government that has no checks and balances would would make so again i want to set your heart at ease we're not going to kill each other we don't want to help our enemies that that's what they would like and that's what they're watching um but it is definitely a turbulent time and expect to see more protests on the streets and expect to see um high spirits um but don't expect to see us self-destruct that would be very self-destructive and ignorant um expect to see our our economy affected um which is one more reason for us to stand here and be strong and be what we are which is mo's which means strength and a fortress and know that there's going to be more people in need and uh, be there for them and know that really our only answer is to walk in the path that god has given israel and so in your prayers this morning if you would pray that that israel would walk in the path that god has set for her and give us leaders who fear him who will walk in integrity and lead us in the path of the lord then i would really appreciate it and shinny ferguson shalom from jerusalem and good morning